Welcome to the Lock In live stream. It's Friday evening. We're back after one week off in the past six months. Myself and Mrs. Stories and Sips took a bit of a vacation last week, did a little bit of traveling around, but we're back tonight. We're back to drink whiskey. We're back to have a bit of crack. We're back to chat. We're back to uh, perhaps even have a bit of music. Uh, let us know where you are, what's in your glass tonight, and uh, whereabouts in the world you're joining us from. Thanks to everybody for tuning in again. Eric and John, good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. We had a great vacation. We drove cross country from San Diego to Colorado and back and had a few stops along the way. So a good old time. We had indeed a welcome break, but the uh, the turtleneck is back, much to, uh, to your joy, I'm sure. And we'll be uh, sipping on three great whiskeys tonight, telling their stories. For the first time ever, we are finding the most affordable Irish whiskeys we could. All too often, we are finding expensive whiskeys and sipping on those because isn't it great that we can get our hands on them every now and again and we sip them and we talk about them. But tonight we are going with three whiskeys that are under $20 a bottle and there is great value to be had in the Irish whiskey world at that price point. So looking forward to sharing three whiskeys with you in this order. We're going to start tonight with Bush Mills Red Bush. We'll be drinking that first this evening. Then we will be moving on to two gingers, and then finally, we will be ending with Paddy Irish Whiskey, old label bottle here, Paddy Irish Whiskey, very familiar to many of you. Those will be the three whiskeys we're drinking tonight. So thanks to everybody for tuning in. Great to see the familiar faces. Brian Houston in Scotland with a red breast list out. Good man. James says the turtleneck is present. It is indeed. Let the crack begin. Kieran Quinn is out pretending to coach baseball again with a small batch, cask strength in the disguise. <laughs> Good man. Good to see you, Cassandra, in Savannah on vacation, sipping on WD O'Connell 18 year old. Lovely, lovely stuff altogether. Great to see you. Maureen says, You've missed me. I've missed you all too. It wasn't the same. It was strange that the first Friday in six or seven months that we didn't do a live stream, it felt odd. Uh, not to be doing the live stream on a Friday. So delighted to be back and uh, really excited to spend some time with you all tonight. So we are going to, uh, I mentioned we've got three lovely whiskeys, three affordable whiskeys for a change tonight uh, because there's great value to be had in the Irish whiskey world at the lower end of the market, price-wise, not lower end quality-wise because I've yet to meet an Irish whiskey that isn't quality. We may just not be drinking it the right way. And uh, in addition Tonight, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our own whiskey, the story, which we'll release in December, and the samples that have made their way over to me uh, that I've been working my way through. I'll talk a little bit about those. And we also, in a few minutes, we'll be bringing in, uh, I'm delighted that we're going to bring in a musical guest who's going to join us uh, for the first, for the first uh, portion of tonight's live stream, and we're really lucky to have him, and I'll be introducing and announcing him in a couple of minutes' time. He's busy in the backstage area rehearsing there and eating all his M&Ms. He only wanted green M&Ms in the bowl in the green area, so we made sure he got those. Ed is joining us from, he's drinking Green Spot, in the 614 up in Columbus. Great stuff. And Gavin is just opening a bottle of McConnell's, five-year-old. Lovely. I've yet to try that. Looking forward to trying that one. Ed Stannard is drinking a mixture of poutine and sweet stuff to get rid of it. In the, with powers in the two a glass. So Ed's making cocktails there for himself in the two a glass. Juan asks if Paddy is one of my favorites. Paddy is one of my favorite affordable Irish whiskeys. I could sip on Paddy all day long and it's a lovely cork history to Paddy Irish whiskey, which we'll talk a little bit about as well uh, later on. Frank is sipping on Dingle Single Malt in Jupiter, Florida. Good man, Frank. Lovely drop of Dingle. I see Dingle popping up more and more in the shelves here in California, which is, uh, which is great to see. Steve says, if I'd been here a couple of days ago, I'd have needed that turtleneck four to five inches of snow in Colorado and low temperatures in the 20s. Yeah, we, when we were there, it was in the 90s and then it was a drop down to the 30s the day after we left. So uh, we did hit that snowstorm on the way home through Utah, but uh, we're lucky we weren't stranded there. James is at home in Boston, sipping on the Lestau. Can't get enough of it. Great stuff. Great stuff. And Jerry has a two gingers poured already. Great stuff. We'll be talking about that. Steve came close on the under $20 uh, label tonight, enjoying Paddy, Blackbush, and Powers. Yeah, you almost got to under $20. Uh, I, I even got lower than $20 on one of these. I won't tell you which one yet, but I got it for $13.99, which is the cheapest I've ever bought a full-size bottle of whiskey for in my life. In my life. 
So before we bring in our musical guest, we'll bring him in in, in, in about two minutes' time. Uh, I want to uh, remind you of our podcast that went out this week. We had a great reaction. Uh, it has been listened to uh, more times in two days than any podcast we've ever released. And that was our chat this week with uh, James Doherty, the co-founder together with his wife Moira of the Sleeve League Distillery uh, up there in Donegal in northwest, the northwest corner of Ireland. And James and his wife and their team and family are doing amazing things uh, with the building of their second distillery. They have a gin distillery and now they're building, their, they're about to break ground on their second distillery, their whiskey distillery, where they'll only produce smoky peated whiskey. And we had a fantastic conversation. James has a has a has decades of experience in the uh, drinks world, working all over the the world uh, in the in the alcohol side of things. Has great experience on the whiskey side, uh, both in Irish whiskey and Scotch and other drinks. And he's bringing a remarkable perspective and kindness uh, to the world of Irish whiskey, uh, which joins uh, uh, the other all the other kind people that we find ourselves meeting in the world of Irish whiskey. So if you haven't listened to our podcast yet, our episode, our chat with James Doherty of Sleeve League Distillers, you'll find that on storiesandsips.com or wherever you get your podcast. So do me a favor and listen to that. And if you enjoy it, leave me a review. And if you don't enjoy it, don't leave me a review. It's as simple as that. Stacy says the podcast was really awesome. Great stuff. I know Stacy and uh, Devin are big peated smoky whiskey fans. So you'll be excited to see what comes out of Sleeve League over the next 10 years uh, as they do really, really interesting things. Kelly, all three of these whiskeys tonight. Great stuff. Well, I will give you a heads up, Kelly, and say you, you'll need a tall Collins glass full of ice for one of these whiskeys. Uh, and I'll give the game away and tell you it's the two gingers because two gingers was not designed to be a sipping whiskey. It was designed to be a mixing whiskey. And we'll talk about that. That's our second whiskey tonight. So uh, for those of you who've just joined, this is the Friday night lock-in live stream where we come together. We uh, check in on each other, make sure that we're safe and we're healthy and we salute and toast another week under our belt and thankfully uh, we've made it this far and uh, i'm excited that the pubs in ireland are going to open in the next two weeks that's good news for ireland and hopefully we're getting to see some return to normality across the world uh, and we all know so many uh, folks who have been affected either through their jobs or, or health wise from from the way the world is right now so fingers crossed that that moves uh, away from us as fast as it came in so uh, a couple of weeks ago we had our Kilbegan session, which was a remarkable night, three hours of, I mean, it was a session to beat all sessions. And we had the remarkable Mr. Paddy Homan, musician, uh, all the way from Cork, from Fairhill in Cork, joined us, uh, thanks to the folks at Kilbegan for bringing him in. And there was a great response to Paddy, and he was a great character, and you all loved the musical uh, interjections into our whiskey drinking. And of course, a lock-in is not a lock-in without a bit of music breaking out. And if you're ever privileged enough to find yourself locked into a pub when you shouldn't be locked into a pub in Ireland, uh, you'll, you're hoping that somebody has some kind of an instrument. And if they don't, they'll manufacture one out of a bit of string and, and a brush or something. But we need um, we need music in our lock-ins. And so tonight, I'm really excited that we um, we have a musician joining us. And we will do our best to bring more Irish musicians uh, to the fore here on the lock-in because I think it's a great combination with our whiskey, but it's also a great way to showcase and hero those Irish musicians who are over here in America plying their trade and flying the Irish flag. So I asked Paddy, I reached out to Paddy during the week. I said, Paddy, who should we have on the lock-in? And he said, there's only one man you should have on there. There's only one man. He said, he is the Jimi Hendrix. This is his, his words now exactly. He said, you want a man called Lawrence Nugent. He's the Jimi Hendrix of the flute. Sold, I said. Connect me with Lawrence. So without further ado now, let me bring in Lawrence. Lawrence, you're very welcome. How's it going, Barry? <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. Lawrence, all the way from Fermanagh in Northern Ireland by way of uh, Chicago. Is that right? That's right, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, a strange, uh, not in recent years, but I've been in many a lock in, but uh, this is the strangest <laughs> one I've ever been in. <laughs> I know. Normally we'd be able to clink glasses and pat each other on the back and uh, and tell each other stories up close, but without without that possibility, this is the, the, the second best thing we have. I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, Lawrence, how long have you been over in the States now yourself? 
Well, I've been here about 30 years. 30, I came here as about 19. Um, so I've been here about 31 years or 30 or 31. I can't remember exactly what I came to New York and uh, maybe 89. And I lived in New York City for um, Philadelphia for four or five, maybe four years, five years. And I moved to Chicago, you know. Yes. So, uh, I've been, uh, you know, uh, you know, when you're a musician, I got to travel quite a bit of America now, all over, actually. <laughs> And Lawrence is sporting the Fermanagh GAA Gaelic yeah. Athletic Association jersey because he knows it'll never be seen on television because the team is so poor, <laughs> they'll never make it to a championship. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, they got to the quarterfinal, I believe, uh, back in the, a few years back, I think, or maybe the semis, I think. Remember, they were beat by Mayo, I think, I believe. But that was uh, maybe eight or nine years ago. I think that's as far as they've got there now. But... Uh, we have uh, nice. we have Lock Air in there one, and we've got a bunch of good stuff up there in Fermanagh, you know. That's it, and you and you a great county for the music. Oh yeah, there's some uh, fabulous musicians from there, you know. Uh, boy, uh, you know, I grew up. My dad was a musician, had a Keeley band, traditional Keeley band, you know, dance band. Yeah. Uh, the Pride of Erin. His name was Sean Nugent, and uh, he's well known. He taught a lot of kids there and a lot of stuff there, and you know, there's a lot of famous, you know. You may have heard of a band in the 80s, Mama's Boys, rock band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pat McManus, a good friend of mine. Uh, he's from Fermanagh. So they have lots of uh, the McConnell brothers, Cahill McConnell, Mickey McConnell. He lives down in uh, Listowel there. Uh, there's a lot of famous musicians and singers from, you know, around there. You know. And you have been, you have had an illustrious playing career. I was reading your bio and I was having Paddy tell me, I mean, you have, you've played, uh, you've done some sessions with the Chieftains, you've sat in, you've sat in with Van Morrison, you have played with some of the greats of Irish music, um, and I'd imagine that if you were no good, they wouldn't have asked you back. Yeah, well, a couple of times I was lucky, you know, I was with uh, Billy McComsky, some Irish uh, American uh, uh, musicians, and they asked me to go, and actually a uh, fellow Seamus Connolly and me were in Canada once in Winnipeg, and we got asked to join the Chieftains, they were in town, and we got to you know, play with them one night or a couple of nights, right. I believe, and then uh, hung out at the Irish club there with a couple of them. And uh, I used to live in uh, uh, the East Village in uh, in New York City. I come from a little village called Lack in County Fermanagh, and I thought, you know, when I moved to Greenwich Village, it was, you know, the same sort of setup, but I was kind of yeah. mistaken. No, <laughs> I always say that to people, you know. That, you know. You're a long way from Fermanagh there. Uh, anyway, there was a place called the Chenet Cafe around the corner. It was run by a Dublin fellows, and a lot of famous musicians would come in their van. And we used to yes. play there, and the, the, the Pogues would come in, and Sinead O'Connor, and all you know, people that were touring. And they, there was always a, that part of these villages. So sometimes I'd be playing in there. So we had a couple of sessions where you know uh, Van and came in, and he sang a song, and you know we kind of played along, and you know. Not, Fantastic. not any major tours, unfortunately. I wish I would have got the chance to do that. But uh, my cousin played with him for a while. He just passed away there, Artie McGlynn, you know. So I kind of right. met him a little bit through him, you know, my way back, you know. And he just celebrated, I believe, his 75th birthday, I think, last week, if I if I recall. I believe that, yeah. 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 Um, so you're going to play a few tunes for us tonight. We are, we are very fortunate to have you on. And I... You were playing a couple there for me earlier, and when I logged in, you were you were working your way in the in the backstage area. You were rehearsing, and uh, Mrs. Stories and Sips, my good wife, looked over. She heard the sound, and her, she she made big eyes like that's the loveliest sound she'd heard in a while, you know. So I know the audience is going to really enjoy the few tunes tonight. Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of strange doing it like this. You know, I'm usually used. I, know. To, I think I don't know if I've ever actually done we done a gig just on monday for the city of chicago and it was like a film thing you know for a world yes. thing but to be you know shown later but i don't think i've ever done this is actually except for a few acapella things with some other musicians here in the lockdown but uh you know <laughs> uh, i've never done anything like this live so i'll do my best but we'll uh, have the crack we'll have the crack but listen i'm going to pour a drop of bushmills red for anyone who's joining along with me um, we'll talk more about Bushmills Red after Lawrence plays us an old tune, but I'm going to pour a drop of this into my glass because when I'm listening to a drop, uh, listening to a bit of good music, I like to have a drop of good whiskey in there. So starting off with the Bushmills Red, we'll talk more about that in a second. Um, Lawrence, what what do you suggest? What are you going to play for us? Oh well, you know, I just thought I'd play a couple of old, maybe a couple of 
Irish reels just to start out with, you know, and uh, you know, uh, kind of common dance tunes. The first one, these are two real old ones that have been played for oh boy, I'd say a hundred years or more. They're you know, um, the first one came from a great piper, Patsy Tui. It's called I just call it Patsy Tui's, and the other one's an old reel that a lot of Irish traditional musicians would know called the Shasky. Lovely. So take it away, Lawrence. Unreal, fair play, loved it. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. There were a couple of old tunes there, and I'm a little bit rusty now. The first one, more, but I might warm up a little bit now. Great response from the audience, loving it, uh, absolutely oh. loving the music. Thank um, you. A, que a question from Steve he wants me to ask you about your flute. He said he used to play the flute, and he's very curious what type of flute you're using there. Oh, uh, yeah, well, you know, I have multiple flutes here, you know, so I mean, these are like these are like uh, you know. Basically, like uh, the one I played here, this is a, uh, you know, they're called Irish concert flutes or a transverse wooden flute is uh, mm. another name for it. And the keys are mounted on the outside, as you can see here. And um, these are the kind of flutes they paid before the, uh, you know, the, the classical silver, you know, silver flute the bone system that they normally you would see in a, you know, a orchestra or jazz music or, yes. you know, and, uh, 
it's a different system. And um, these are the flutes that they played before that. This mm. was actually a copy of a Rudel. This is one that's made by, both were made by famous makers, a guy called Patrick Allwell in Virginia who made this one. It's made out of African black wood and all the keys are mounted on the outside, you know. Um, the same with this one is a, a, a copy of a Rudel and Rose, which is a famous flute makers from London in the 1800s, you know. And, Very uh, nice. And uh, the keys are all mounted on the outside, you know. So um, they they are. Uh, this is the both of them are you know equally you know, and they're they're made out of African black wood. So the the wood is really seasoned. So you know, there's when you play, uh, it's just you can get a lot more different tones out of the wooden flute, you know. So then, uh, you know, I mean, it's just a little bit different than uh, it's kind of more raw sounding than you know the uh, yeah yeah. How old were you when you picked up your first flute, or did you pick up a tin whistle first, or I what started, came first? I started on the tin whistle first, you know. So when I was about maybe uh, eight or nine, and then I played yeah. uh, played that for a few years before I got a flute, you know. So probably around eleven or twelve when I started playing the flute, you know. Is that the natural progression from tin whistle to flute? If you're interested, would people start that way normally? Uh, yes, in Ireland, a lot of people, you know, that play. Well, they move. I think a lot of people, even that play other instruments, start on the tin whistle. You know, mm. it's a great stepping stone. You know, for anybody that's trying to learn Irish music, you know, to start out with. You know, you don't. Everybody's it's not meant to play. You know, you can invest. You know, a lot of money in instruments, and then yes. they, they just quit. You can buy a whistle. They were called penny whistles over here or tin whistles. When I bought the first, I remember buying ones in Enniskillen when I was a. I think they were about one or two pounds back then. In the I suppose that was the early '80s or you know maybe around that time, uh, yes. you know you could start playing on that. And I mean, if you didn't, you wouldn't be out a lot of uh, you wouldn't be out a lot of uh, you know money if you decided you know say your kid know. you know if you, instead of buying you know a violin or a fiddle or a you know an accordion or a set of pipes at you know thousands of dollars you know or thousands of pounds every, every and, build at some point had a tin whistle in their back pocket in ireland growing up didn't they i think everybody had a go at it you know and i think some of the yeah. schools even they taught it in school too you know so uh, i mean I they mean, did they, they did. didn't teach it in my school but uh you know um <laughs> they um uh you picked you up through your family yeah your dad. Me, me music around the house all the time so uh, there's yeah. Uh, my, my brothers and sisters are singers or play music, you know. So, if you're just joining us, I'm here with Lawrence Nugent, our resident musician for the night. We're very lucky to have him. Uh, Lawrence is uh, uh, not by his own admission, but by others' description, the Jimi Hendrix of the flute. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> Well, Jimi Hendrix isn't here to argue with any uh, any comparison, so you're gonna you you get to keep it. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. We're, uh, Lar I asked Lawrence, you know, he said, what, what, what should we play tonight? And I said, well, what, what do you enjoy playing and, and what would give you pleasure in playing? Because I know that whenever I watch a musician who's enjoying what they're doing, the sound is only beautiful. And so I, I don't, I have no idea what you have in line for us tonight, but I know as long as you play something you enjoy, we'll get a great kick out of it altogether. Well, um, yeah, you know, you know, I, you know, I have multiple, you know, recordings and stuff, you know, so sometimes like those two tunes that would be, uh, you know, common tunes and sessions that I just played. If you're at a yes. tradition, I mean, there's a good chance the last one might be played there, you know, by, um, uh, and, uh, you'd probably hear that tune if you're at an Irish session at the Flat Kill or, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. somewhere there. In the Metropolitan Hotel in Cork, there at the folk festival, and there's a bunch of musicians there, or somewhere, you yes, know, and, jazz uh, festival, maybe. <laughs> well, yeah, you mightn't hear the Shaskin reel at a jazz festival, though. No, no, you, <laughs> you definitely would hear, uh, uh, <laughs> somebody's right. I remember being killed as a child for running around with a muscle in my mouth. Someone, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly a dangerous thing. I think I might have done that a few times myself there, Ronan. I can see uh, the names here. So, uh, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's not a good idea. But uh, no, it's not. It's not. But, but listen, uh, we, we, for those of you who are joining along and, and sipping with us, uh, Lawrence is going to is kind enough to stay with us for, for a little bit and play some tunes for us. And I want to intersperse the music with a talk of a little bit of whiskey uh, because whiskey and music are a great combination altogether. And 
Uh, I promised three whiskeys tonight that were affordable. I've got all three of these whiskeys for under $20. So what I'm sipping on right now is Red Bush. And I got Red Bush for $19.99. And what is Red Bush? We might be familiar with Bush Mills. Bush Mills from Lawrence's uh, corner of the world up there in Northern Ireland. But it's in Antrim, yeah. not for Manor. It's in Antrim, yeah. Yep. Um, but Bush Mills is making great inroads in the United States. And Red Bush is really their, their new entry-level whiskey. Uh, it is designed to convert bourbon drinkers to Irish whiskey. So this is one of the uh, only uh, Bushmills uh, whiskeys you'll ever find that is aged only in bourbon casks. There's no sherry casks at all in this. It's a young whiskey. It's a blended whiskey. It's a blend of single malt, which is the only whiskey they make. Uh, they produce themselves in, Nord in, uh, in Antrim, in Bushmills. Single malt and grain, which is a corn whiskey. So they'll blend the two of those together. A little bit higher percentage of grain than is malt in this. Young whiskey, three-ish years, three plus years, not, not far beyond that. Um, and it is a... It is a young whiskey, but it is a very pleasant whiskey. And I have not, it's my first time trying it. I only opened this five minutes before coming on and had a sip. And it's a light whiskey. It's not harsh. It's uh, it's not got a huge length to it, as you would imagine, for a, a whiskey that is uh, not designed to be super complex, but definitely an easy drinking whiskey for bourbon drinkers and a sweeter whiskey with that corn component to get people into, into Irish whiskey and make that leap over from bourbon. So that's what I'm sipping on. I'm not... Uh, adding water and not adding ice. I'm not mixing this with anything. I'm just going to sip on this. Uh, and so slaunch it to all of you out there who are drinking along with me and slaunch it to, to, to Lawrence, who's uh, kind enough to, to come with us on this journey tonight. I told him how long we go on these uh, sessions sometimes for three hours. He nearly fell off his seat when I told him. He said, I'm not staying there for three hours. I said, no, you're not expected to. <laughs> if you'd have caught me maybe 15 years ago, I could have stayed the, the distance. <laughs> <laughs> No doubt. No, I always come on to the live stream with the goal of wrapping this up in an hour. And three hours later, we're virtually holding ourselves up and singing songs together. But that's that's the sign of a good that's the sign of a good lock in anyway. Um, so this uh, this whiskey, it does taste a little bit young, but it doesn't taste harsh. There's no burn to it. It's 40 percent ABV. Um, I know some people don't like this at all uh, in the Irish whiskey world. I would say this is a very approachable, very affordable, uh, easy entrant, uh, easy um, maybe first time entrant into the Irish whiskey world. Drop a red bush, you can't really go wrong and work your way up to the more sherried casks from there, like Bushmills regular, black bush, and maybe even find your way to a Bushmills 21 or a single malt. Um, so tell me, Lawrence, if you were playing another tune, what would you pull out of your back pocket for us? She, um, well, you know, um uh, probably play, maybe I'll play a slower one this time. I, we've okay. kind of talked about that. But I think, you know, um, if you're having a glass of whiskey, uh, you know, I don't participate myself, partake any myself, myself but I usually, uh, boy, uh, around Cork there, I remember have been down there many years ago in Baltimore and uh, been in Middleton and uh, all of, um, down around Skipperine there in uh, Baltimore. I just loved it down there. Skull Beautiful. and, uh, one of my favorite parts of Ireland down there is, you know, to be honest, and I love Baltimore. It was just beautiful. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. No place like it. When the sun is shining. So uh, I'll not try and play this too long, but there's a great uh, tune that I play there from, it always reminds me from down there. There's an island called Cape Clearer. I'm sure you've heard of it. Yeah. You know it, yeah. And there's a great old air, and that's the name of it. It's called Cape Clear. And I actually, I actually, there's a kind of a movie that, I uh, there was a I don't know why there was a sword fighting scene. It was a movie about St Patrick. And right. It's uh, St Patrick the Legend. It was a pretty you know big. I can't remember Patrick Bergen. You ever heard of that actor? Yeah, 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 yeah. He was on it. So actually, um, on uh, one of the tracks I played in the movie, there was this massive sword fighting thing, and they pl they played one of my tracks off the CD. Cape Clear, and there was a kind of a butch. I don't know if it's a butchering scene, but one of those sword fighting things. And I was like, "Boy, that arrow was meant to be that, like played over the top of that." And they used, you know, in the movie. And it was like, yeah. it was kind of a little sad. But if you take a good uh, swig of the whiskey, you might really get into this one, though. So, all right, I'll take your word on it. It's an old one called Cape Clear. Lovely.
Beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're not supposed to move us to tears this early in the night. That oh, wasn't geez, part of the deal. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I'll keep it lightly from now on. <laughs> that but was beautiful. That's a great tune, you know. Uh, it's a great, you know, it's called Cape Clear. It's a very old air, you know. They're, they're distilling gin down in Cape Clear at the moment, and they'll be distilling whiskey soon. So oh, Cape wow. Clear and Inish Clear will be music and whiskey together uh, down in Cape Clear uh, again. Um, would you have a more of a love for a slow song or a faster song, or would it depend on the time of the day or your mood? Oh, you know, that, de that depends. You know, I, I I mean, you know, there's certain times when you're playing, you know, um, you know, in a situation like this where I'm just sitting by myself, you know, I mean, yeah. you wouldn't play, you know, airs all night long, you know, I mean, they're usually, uh, but, you know, um, I think, you know, the tradition of Ireland and the, you know, for me personally, you know, the emotion and the, uh, you know, the history of the, you know, I mean, we've such a, you know, a massive history of thousands of years of all sorts of things happening, you know, that, you know, uh, I think that, you know, the airs and long before there was music and people speaking Irish and just, you know, the whole tradition of the music was passed on like that to start out with, you know. So, um, uh, you know, there's great joy and sadness that can be expressed in, you know, and and playing the airs, you know what I mean? I feel, you know, I just feel, uh, you know, I, I can really get into playing, you know. It's expression, isn't it? It's, it's Yeah, well, you yeah. know, it's just, you know, you know, you know, uh, you're a, you know, if you can play any kind of instrument and, you know, I just feel like that, uh, you know, the, uh, the expression that you can, you know, you know, with your soul and yourself and, you know, the different yes. uh, aspects of your own being, you know, it's easy to, you know, to get it across, you know what I mean? And it's very relaxing instead of, you know, I mean, I like to jam out. Don't get me wrong now, because I usually play kind of wild stuff too, but, uh, <laughs> you know, music world wild, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, um, but I just feel like, you know, sometimes it's nice just to have relax a little bit and play something absolutely you know, mellow or you know. well, you're, you're, you're moving people to tears and to drink, uh, and and that's a good <laughs> thing. Uh, <because laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, well, thank you, everyone. <laughs> There's a whiskey brand, an Irish whiskey uh, brand called Writer's Tears, and Peter says Writer's Tears should use music as a marketing tool. This is fabulous. <laughs> wow. Writer's Tears. Um, so, um, be beautiful. I, I Honestly, now, I, I don't, I'm not used to being moved to kind of emotion. Uh, I'm used to being moved to whiskey and to the next whiskey here on these lock-ins, but that was a lovely... There's a lovely trigger there, a motive trigger, and I know it struck a it struck a beautiful chord with with our with our listeners as well. Um, if you've just joined, I'm here with Lawrence Nugent, who is a, a fantastic uh, musician. Uh, he plays the flute and the tin whistle and uh, many uh, reed instruments, and he is uh, sticking around with us for a little bit uh, to accompany our whiskey drinking. And tonight. We're drinking three whiskeys that you can find in the United States for less than $20, which brings me to the next whiskey, which uh, we will imbibe upon and talk about. And that is the wonderful story of Two Gingers. Two Gingers is our next whiskey. I found this today for $13.99, which is cheaper than I've paid for many for, for a drop of red breast in many pubs around California. Uh, this whole bottle was just $13.99. And uh, Lawrence knows the man behind this. He's met him a few times. Yes, uh, Kieran. Mr. Kieran, Kieran Folliard, Kieran, who we yeah. had in our podcast. I've Kieran is a Mayo man. Yeah, I've played up in the TU Stone a few bars. I think he still does in uh, Minneapolis. Yeah. There was one called Kieran's, and I was there actually when it opened first, and we used to play a lot of music there on a regular basis, actually. I'd be up there at least oh, my, once a month or twice. <laughs> Sometimes for uh, three and four weeks at a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can I may, find the door now. I may, I cannot remember, but I may have been in a, lock, a few lockins. I'm not sure, but I, 
there's a chance I could have been in a few lock-ins there. <laughs> you might, we might have passed the statute of limitations on that, so you should be all right. <laughs> Well, Kieran, Kieran joined us on the podcast last week, a remarkable, or not last week, but a few weeks ago, and shared his remarkable story, an Irishman coming from Mayo all the way over to, to Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, and making a great name for himself and flying the Irish flag. And Kieran, as, as uh, Lawrence mentioned, opened a number of pubs in Minneapolis, St. Paul, the Twin Cities, and very uh, entrepreneurial man and uh, a, a great man for the banter and the chat. And I read an interview about him before I talked to him where somebody said, everybody in Minneapolis thinks that they're best friends with him uh, because he had that way of making everybody feel like they were his best friend. Uh, and whether they were his friends or not, I don't know, but he had a remarkable way of making everybody feel like, or has a remarkable way of making everybody feel like um, they're his best friends. Now, Kieran, what he did was he was he had the account that sold the most Jameson in the world, the world's biggest Jameson account. And after two or three price increases of Jameson, decided that, that wasn't going to cut it anymore and he couldn't keep passing along the expense to his customers so kieran had the bright idea of coming out with or of getting his own whiskey so he went to john teeling in cooley distillery back in the day and john teeling helped craft and create two gingers now this was never designed to be a sipping whiskey this is not one that stands up there that you will drink side by side with a red spot or a middleton very rare this is designed to be a cocktail whiskey because kieran was the inventor of a cocktail called the big ginger uh, and he he had asked his bartenders to come up with something for the for the summer months when big creamy pints of Guinness mightn't cut it. He asked his bartenders to come up with something, and they came up with this cocktail originally made with Jameson, which was literally just Jameson, ice, ginger ale, and a wedge of orange or a wedge of lemon and a wedge of lime, and a and he called it the big ginger, served it in a tall glass. So I have a tall glass of ice here, a Guinness glass stolen from some pub, which will remain nameless, and. We're going to put. We're going to make our big ginger here tonight by pouring in two measures of two ginger in here. We'll give it a healthy pour to melt the ice. That's my excuse. And then we've got some ginger ale here, which we're going to pour on top of it to make our big ginger. But we'll forget about the fruit because I forgot to buy it. So we'll have no, no orange and no lemon, but instead we'll have our big ginger. So here's a big ginger made with two gingers, which is a blended whiskey, uh, single malt and corn grain whiskey, predominantly grain whiskey in that, light whiskey, not designed to be sipping on its own, but make it into a cocktail like this and you'll be grand. So slauncha, as I sip on two gingers, uh, in, the two gingers infused big ginger. Now, for $13.99, you can't go wrong. To be making your own Irish whiskey cocktails that big with a couple of pours of $13.99 whiskey, I salute Kieran for his uh, ability to bring a low-cost whiskey to the market. And what he would do is he told me the story. If you've listened to the podcast, you'll know this. But if you haven't, you're dead to me because you should be listening to all my podcasts. But in any case, he told the story of how he would go around liquor store and liquor store around Minnesota Minnesota, and rather than giving people little measures of whiskey at 11 o'clock in the morning and asking them to sample it, he'd instead add in a bit of ginger ale and he'd make little miniature cocktails. And he'd ask people if they wanted a light, refreshing cocktail. And who's going to turn that down? So they'd have small little miniature cocktails in the liquor store and everybody fell in love with the Irish whiskey that way. So a, a great a great little uh, bit of creativity to get Irish whiskey into people at 10, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning. Not that some of us need that excuse sometimes but in any case he made a go of it and within a year he was the best selling one of the best selling whiskeys in minneapolis or minnesota and eventually his brand was acquired by beam the, the company that owns jim beam which then became beam suntory one of the world's largest drinks companies and uh, they still own it to this day and kieran still works as a brand ambassador for them flying the flag for them he had to sell his pubs because i american law dictated that you couldn't be a distributor you couldn't have your own whiskey and your own pubs because of the antiquated three-tier system of in the liquor industry here in the united states so he sold his pubs to his his managers and he kept hawking the whiskey around the around the states and uh, no better man to be talking about whiskey um did you ever try it back in the day uh lawrence when he first came out of it uh you know i don't think uh you know i haven't drank in years myself but uh, i uh two gingers wasn't even out that's only been mm -hmm. That's that is only that is only out. I don't know how long. Maybe maybe about. I'm guessing ten or fifteen years. Would that be Would that be correct? 
You know what? It could be 10 years. It could be 10 years. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I don't think uh, that wasn't even uh, I, when I was uh, when I was in mini, uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul uh, when Kieran first opened. I think that when he opened Kieran's, I, I believe it was Kieran's, it was around 3rd Street and 2nd Avenue in Minneapolis. I think that was in around 1994, 93. I'm guessing okay. 94, 95. I think okay. that was the first pub, I believe. And then he had, I believe, the Dubliner in St. Paul, too. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, no, he did not. That, yeah. that that wasn't even available then, you know. Or, or, you know. So, I, don't, um, I don't think that that came out. I'm guessing that that's ten or fifteen years old. I'm just going yeah. To say. I, I think I think it is. And and he the brand was acquired within a year. Um, such was its. He had such a, a strong brand presence in in Minnesota that Beam thought that it was a an important brand to have in their stable and a very. I mean, for an entry level. If you're just entering Irish whiskey, the world of Irish whiskey, again, no different than the red bush we started with. Two gingers mixing a cocktail. That's an easy way to get into Irish whiskey. A bit of ice, a bit of whiskey, and a bit of ginger ale, uh, and you won't feel the harshness of the whiskey if it's your first time. Um, I could sip on whiskey and ginger ale all day long, and $13 a bottle. I, I fully intend to sip on whiskey and ginger ale all day long. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the the other bit of worth telling about the story of two gingers is on the on the the label on the front of it here you'll see uh, two gingers are named for his mother and his aunt two redheads and that's then that's where the name two gingers comes from and Stacy I see in the comments is looking for the cocktail recipe it's a very easy cocktail recipe Stacy you fill a Collins glass with ice pour two parts of two gingers whiskey into it top it up with ginger ale uh, wedge with both a lemon and a lime I put there there's the recipe there. I'll put that into our Facebook group as well for you. It's a very simple one. Juan says, if there is a person here who doesn't listen to the Stories and Sips podcast on Spotify or YouTube, stop right now everything and go listen to all the chapters. Thank you, Juan. Juan is flying the flag for Irish whiskey down in Argentina and uh, doing a great job of it. If, if um, Juan, put your, put your Instagram and your f Facebook or Twitter in the comments there so that everybody can follow you down in Argentina. Uh, Juan spent a lot of time in Ireland and fell in love with Irish whiskey and is doing a great job down there in Argentina. So we're looking forward to seeing more, more from him. Andrew says that this two gingers is easier on the wallet than sipping on my red breasts old fashioned. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. But you look, sometimes we have to treat ourselves. Aren't we worth it? <laughs> Stacy having a go at me saying it's a, a perfectly easy cocktail recipe. And she says, yeah, says the man who forgot the fruit. <laughs> I had one job today. That was to get the ingredients for tonight. <laughs> and I forgot half them. <laughs> um, so we were on the road this week and um, we didn't completely remove ourselves from whiskey, even though we were on holidays, because there's really no holiday from whiskey. Everything in moderation, of course. But we uh, happened to find our way to Colorado, which was our intended destination, so we did well. But we knew that there was a distillery in Colorado that's doing interesting things. A distillery in, in, in Colorado that is uh, just outside Denver that is modeled has modeled its production on the quintessential style of Irish whiskey, which is single pot still whiskey. And that distillery is called the Talnua Distillery. And I have a bottle of Talnua here. In fact, I have a few bottles of different Talnua here. But for those of you who are from Colorado, Steve, I'm looking at you and others in our group. You see here I've got um, Old Saints Keep and the Quarter Cask, two single pot still whiskeys. I had a wonderful tour and a wonderful time visiting and a wonderful tasting there. You'll be delighted to hear that in two weeks' time, we're going to have the founders of Talnua Distillery on our lock-in, and we're going to do a side-by-side -side tasting, maybe a little, little contest between Irish single pot still and American single pot still. So Patrick and his wife are going to come on and talk to us uh, about Talnua and about their uh, endeavors in the world of single pot still whiskey, how they got inspired by Ireland, Red Breast in particular. And we're going to taste these all side by side. So that's in two weeks time. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Jeff Adams, I'm looking at you. You went to Talnua last week as well. I think I passed you on the road um, and you picked up a great bounty or booty there as well. So that's in two weeks time. In a week's time, we are going to have a very special event indeed because it's halfway to St. Patrick's Day, but I'm not going to tell you anything about that right now because you've got to stay till the very end and then I'm going to tell you what's happening next week. That's my little hook to keep you in here. 
If you're enjoying the show tonight, as I am, would you all do me a favor? Do two things for me. The first is, would you give a, a few claps in the comments to Lawrence um, for his great music that he's been playing for us so far? And also, if you would do me the honor of pressing share, whether you're watching this on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, share this live stream with your friends, your family, uh, inundate them with our Irish whiskey adventures that we have here every Friday night so that they may too join us and have a bit of crack with us. Uh, the more people that can join in uh, with our Friday night lock-in, the more chance we want to get to showcase great musicians like Lawrence and also drink great whiskeys, whether they're $20 or $200 a bottle. This is the night where we have the crack and we get together and we build a bit of community together. So I've been enjoying my cocktail. My two gingers are going down well, my big ginger. Tell me this, Lawrence, if you were on a desert island and you could only, you, you had a, a, an instrument with you you can only bring one instrument with you. Would it be a tin whistle? Would it be a clarinet, a flute? What would you bring with you? Oh, I'd think the tin whistle would be easier to carry around. <laughs> <laughs> in, your speedo, in your speedo on the desert island. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. You can stick it right down the side there, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to go back. Somebody asked me about the flute, and, you know, the two, I uh, just give a, the two guys that made, the guy that made this one is called Patrick Allwell. It's a very famous uh, maker in Virginia. And I just got this one like uh, about a month ago, and it's a beautiful flute by John Gallagher. And uh, these, uh, you, you can't even, uh, you know, someone was uh, asking me about this earlier, and there's a few people that are probably on there. And uh, this one I just got a little while ago, and it arrived a few weeks before my birthday, made for me. I mean, it was a gift, um, and um, it was uh, it's just amazing flute. And, uh, beautiful. It's, uh, you know, the, the wood, just the, the, the amount of uh, craftsmanship that goes into building something like this is amazing, you know. And if you've seen that, you know, it's so hard, the wood has to be seasoned for so long before you can even bore it, you know. And it's African black wood, you know what I mean? Which is yes. it's getting rarer now, you know. But a big, if John Gallagher's listening to this, a big shout out to John Gallagher for this beautiful flute, you know. Very so, good, very good. Tell me, Lawrence, would you would you have an old tune that would lift the floorboards for us? Yes, well, you know what? Uh, someone was, <laughs> someone, I can't remember the person's comment there <laughs> about the whistle running around. Yeah. But, so, you know, a lot of people grew up playing the tin whistle, so, and usually there are cheap ones. I mean, I have like a full, I probably can't, maybe if you have the camera, I'm pointing to them, you can Put see them. There, yeah. There's loads of all kinds of whistles, you know. So, um, I just maybe uh that's a low whistle, but I think I'll just play a few fast, a uh, few reels on the on this whistle. Um, Beautiful. This, this is not a penny whistle. It costs way more than a penny, but uh, I've had this a one. Pound. This one, oh, a lot more than that. But um, <laughs> tunable and brass. I've had this for maybe at least twenty five years, and uh, it's a nice one. So I'll, I'll just play. It. I'll give you a, a this one. It's time to get your dancing shoes on now. This is not hey. uh, so you're no crying with this one. <laughs> get your dancing shoes, grab a partner.
I see you to come on, so that probably was my cue to stop. <laughs> no, I just wanted you to see my head jumping up and down because I've a <laughs> I have a hole worn in the floor from my foot tapping. Oh, sorry, but I've been on too long there. No, stop. I, we the people in the audience don't know how you had the breath to do that or where you were catching your little half breaths and quarter breaths to do that uh, is incredible. Um, I was, I'm, I'm in training with Paddy Homan. <laughs> <laughs> Jimi Hendrix has, isn't a patch on you. Oh. Not a patch. Unreal. That was, I mean, there's moments when you witness something beautiful, something, somebody doing something so well, at, they're so good at their craft that you just laugh out loud. And I laughed out loud as you got, there was a point there where I just uncontrollably just laughed because it's beautiful. It was just beautiful. Well, you know, I think at the start, you know, when you're doing something, I've never done it before. So it's not, uh, you know, as if you're live, you know, in a TV studio or something where you have one. Yeah. It's like, you know, I feel a way, you know, a way, a way more relaxed now. So it's just, you have, I'm having fun now too. Just, I'm not really caring. Should the music be like perfect? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Note, you know, I think it's nice just to be able to, you know, uh, I feel... I feel really at ease, you know, now, so. I mean, that sounds to me like you're only getting started. I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but. <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, that was, it's been great so far. You know, beautiful, so. beautiful. Um, the, if, though, there's so many applause and cheers. I could be clicking here all day, putting these up, all of these claps uh, and and praise uh, for, for the playing. Hon honestly, it's beautiful. Um, really, really beautiful. Um, Lawrence uh, is a master blender of tunes. How about that? There's well, a new one for you. Well, you know what? That last set of tunes I played, I wrote down on this uh, uh, back of a piece of paper, you know, like one, you know, when I when I got home early, I was like trying to decide, well, what, you know, on my recordings, there's like 40 tracks, maybe about 50 tracks of music, you know, on my CDs and with yeah. musicians, bass and drums and gym bass and all sorts. Yes. Like, so I think instead of like, you know, well, uh, it's a lock in, you know, uh, and preparing, oh, I should have this set list and play, you know, exactly. So I just wrote down, as you can see on the back of a regular envelope, you know, it's like <laughs> one, tune, one tune to start off with. And then, well, I, like that last set of tunes was completely spontaneous. I didn't, uh, you know, I just thought as the, you know, in the Irish tradition, there's hundreds of reasons. So as you go from one to the other, somebody could just go into one and then that's where you pick it up. So I just, yes, I mean, amazing. I, there was no, uh, that last set of tunes was just, you know, I was just having a bit of fun jamming out, you know. Well, it's funny as we, as you were playing and as I was pouring the two gingers and sipping away, my phone was buzzing there on, on the table and I was wondering who's calling me. And it's a Minneapolis number, and I didn't recognize it. And I called again and again. I left to go to voicemail. Next thing I get a text, isn't it Kieran Folliard himself, the man oh, behind hi. Two Gingers? And he said, Barry, it's Kieran here. Tell Larry he's the greatest musician that played at his pubs over all the years. Oh, God, I don't know. I'll tell you, I can, uh, as Kieran will attest, there has been... Um, he was a dear friend of Kieran's and a great friend to me and a great friend to all Irish musicians. Um, his name was Tim Fitzgerald. And Tim, mm. the original, he passed away. Uh, I guess Tim's dead. Maybe 10 years, more than that. Maybe 10 years more. Mm. Or maybe more than that. It's more than 10. But he used to be Kieran's manager. when he, Well, one of the managers when he started opening. And he brought, like, the best music in the country to Minneapolis and we had I look I could um, when I tell you about you know going to a place in a, you know I've played in multiple bars and you name a city San Diego where you are all the way from there all the way to uh, Fairbanks Alaska going all the way from California, all the way up through San Francisco, Seattle, yeah. Portland, Juneau, all the way to Fairbanks. I've been in Alaska a bunch of times and, you know, uh, Honolulu and Paddy and I were just in Honolulu. <laughs> uh, when I'm talking about Kieran's, when it opened first, there was a period of time, I guess, from about 90s, 
the late 90s uh, through, I don't know, there was a period of at least 10 years where they had music at least five, six nights a week. Two bands at one time going on. There used to be music in the back room, trad music, and then more more uh like you know folk rock and stuff like that in the front and like the, yeah. the touring bands that would be at like the prairie home companion i was on there yes a few times with garrison keeler or anybody was on there or shows at some of the theaters they'd all come there uh later and i remember you know the celtic fiddle fest with johnny cunningham kevin burke all them being there uh boy uh, tommy makeham uh liam clancy patty riley all the famous, you know, singers from that time, they all used to do concerts at Kieran's, you know, in the back room. There was concerts and live gigs at least four or five nights a week. And Kieran was yeah. a, Kieran and Tim, they were they were I could they were very good to me. Very good. He 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 followed up his text by saying Fitz passed away in March two thousand and ten. Yeah. He was the backbone of Irish culture in Minnesota. But he said he could also tell a few stories about Larry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. back, back in the day, yes, there was no doubt. I used to stay with Fitz, you know, uh, hidden apartments up there. So when we, we would, uh, we would, uh, you know, uh, partake in a lot of lock-ins back at Fitz's place. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> so, uh, back in the day, but... Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, we we all we all have our day out there. <laughs> I'm 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 grinning from ear to ear because I've been over here now in the United States. Uh, what's going on? Fifteen years now, and it's only in the last few years that I've really started to connect with the Irish in the United States. And the whis the world of whiskey has allowed me to meet the best Irish people I've ever met. You know, <laughs> through. The conversations we've had and our shared interest in whiskey and some of the nicest people I've ever met and to have you Lawrence playing for us here tonight and Kieran texting in saying he's watching we're drinking Kieran's whiskey we're listening to Lawrence playing his tunes there's a lot of Irish pride coming across my face now and it's it's just a wonderful thing that we can we have these things that we can share with the world uh, and uh, you've got your music Kieran's got his whiskey and his crack uh, and uh, it's just a wonderful thing that, that we have and uh it's worth raising a glass to, to, to the Irish all over America, wherever they may be in, in the United States and however they're doing. And Slauncha. Slauncha. Mm. My goodness. Um, well, we're having a session. We, um, like everything on our lock-in, we say it's going to go for 30 minutes and we have you here an hour later. And I don't want to be too, uh, I don't want to take, uh, be too uh, uh, liberal with your time. Um, but I wonder, would you, would you have another tune in you? Would you have one more to play us out? Yes, uh, I don't know if anybody you're saying if you want to throw something out there. If anybody has a, a request, you know, and if I can pull it off, I'll, I, I'll, uh, I'll, if I know it, I will, or I'll try and come. Close well, to would you, uh, audience, uh, all of you there, if you'd like to hear an Irish tune, if there's a particular song that's a favorite of yours, put it in the uh, comments there. If Lawrence knows it, he'll play it. If he doesn't know it, he might make it up. But <laughs> in any case, let us know what you'd like to hear. I could um, make there was a few earlier. <laughs> what did we see earlier? Lonesome Boatman. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, that is one that I play weekly at the Curb, a Connemara pub here in town. So uh, I will give it a go. Are we back? There we are. I'm, I'm here. Back. Yeah, you're just, uh, I, I, are we back? We're back. We're back. Yeah. So here's one. Lonesome Boatman, made behind the bar. Yeah. Um, Owl, Owl Triangle. Well, that's a song we always end with at the end of a night. Um, something from Tommy Makem. Yeah. Well, Fields of Appen uh, Right. Gee, boy, there's a lot now. I think I'll just go. The first man to the buzzer there was the... Uh, Loads of boat, man. Lord Lovely. Man. So here we go. This is from the Fury Brothers uh, originally. And then maybe uh, there was somebody said me behind the bar if I have time, I'll do that. But uh, Good man.
No words. <laughs> it's usually better with the backing. It's hard to keep the time, you know. <laughs> this is, I mean, I was spellbound. How fast do your fingers move? Uh, I don't know. It's just a bit of fun, man. You know, I, usually that's kind of a song I'm, I play with. A, there's a few singers, a fellow who owns a bar here called John McDonough, the Curb, and Billy O'Donoghue our friends and we play that tune every week you know this i'm so used to the accompaniment that it's hard yeah you know, yeah i know uh, it's a kind of a tune that you need a steady groove to you know <laughs> if you're if you enjoyed that song that tune would you let us know in the comments as you already are but give your feedback to lawrence what an absolute legend uh caroline says the pavarotti of flautists uh, boom <laughs> says andrew <laughs> Boom. Wow, just wow. <laughs> what else can you say? Um, eat your heart out, Finbar. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> oh, no. oh, don't say that. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be blacklisted in Ireland. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. That's a great, you know, usually that tune is played, you know. You know, I just have on my own version, and I, the, the Fury Brothers, made that famous Finbar Fury wrote that I yes. you know just jam out on it a bit here and there you know and I actually have a record few recordings of it you know this uh boy I have one with uh this kind of a jazz band that uh with uh Frank Quinn if he's a uh he used to actually be um one of the the first reps for Magners here in town uh okay he came here and he's a great guitar player and singer he's from Mullingar and uh couple of i used to be in a band called the holy hour house band the right. holy hour was like you know yeah after you went <laughs> after mass you know, the problem. but that was the <laughs> band we were here in town and we used to one of the things uh one of the things uh we used to play that was with the lonesome boatman but we have like hammond organ and jazz drums and we have a maybe i can send a version of it to you to oh you yeah play show one of the nights i can send you an mp3 or something that you can maybe play oh, lovely we put it in our facebook group we've got uh yeah. all of our fans here are part of our group we've about 5600 people in there uh yeah send me something like that we'll share it in there uh, i know this is going to get this video itself is going to get a lot of traction and engagement over the coming week or two as people get the replay um but i think uh, dana summed it up here is this not the best night of the week uh i mean with this music of course uh and, and it's no thanks to me. I, I only open bottles of whiskey and I'm lucky enough to bring on great people who uh, can entertain and engage with us. And uh, geez, it's almost like we're back in Ireland. It's almost like the real thing, isn't it, Lawrence? Oh, well, yeah, you know, it's nice just to hang out and chat. I mean, I, I've never really um, done anything like this, you know, online like this before. So it's brand new for me to do anything like this. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, I've, I, I talk to my sisters and brothers on facebook messenger uh, FaceTime, yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> talking to someone well there's you know uh uh hundreds of people, thousands of people i, know, I yeah. know so i better not put any dirty jokes <laughs> uh, we have we have you on a five second delay anyway just in case you embarrass us like <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> tell me this um will you come back again to us oh definitely uh buddy. yeah it was fun man thanks for having me you know uh there, you know i uh, i haven't to, you know in fairness uh playing uh, as much as i w have been in the past you know so uh um you know it is what it is you know sometimes i'd be very critical yeah. of the way i'd play i guess but hey i mean i'm i'm, I'm a little bit rusty yeah. <laughs> yeah, will you stop I, I listen if that's rusty i'd hate to i, I think I'd, I'd faint if i saw non-rusty um, but when I was talking to Paddy, uh, Paddy Homan earlier before we came on, he said, ask that man what he can do with two tin whistles. Oh, boy, I don't know if I could even. Uh, <laughs> I don't I, I used to be able to. Uh, these, uh, the problem is I got one bad one and one good one. You know, and, uh, and, and, and look, while, you, while you've got those in your hands, let me tell people to go to your website. Lawrence has four studio albums. So go visit Lawrence's website, lawrencenugent.com. He's got four studio albums. He's got, you can buy his CDs and his music there. Um, please support Lawrence. He's been very kind to us tonight. Uh, we will, of course, be taking care and make sure uh, Lawrence uh, comes back to us again. Uh, and he's uh, hopefully had as good a time here tonight as we have. But this two tin whistle trick is something that uh, I'm <laughs> wondering if you can pull off.
<laughs> you're you're a lunatic. Honest to God. It's the one I got 10 years for. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of the greatest quotes I've ever seen on the lock-in. How many lungs does he have? Absolutely incredible. And another one was, he's playing a duet with himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, um, when I was a kid, there's a great uh, flute player from Fermanagh. He's a great singer to uh, uh, Cahill McConnell. He is, uh, you know, Mickey McConnell. You remember, did you hear that, like, Only a River's Run Free? Yeah, he wrote, yeah. He wrote that song. He was a writer for the Sunday Independent for 30 or 40 years. He lived in the stole. And he's that guy who wrote that song. His brother Cahill is a great singer, flute player, and tin whistle player, and played with yeah. a, made about 40 albums with the Boys of the Lock, a famous Scottish band with Ali B, yeah. and, and traveled the world with them. And he used to play uh, with my uh, dad in the Keeley band when I was a little kid, and um, or maybe even before I was born, actually. But he was always a great encouragement to me, and he he, he was the first person I seen doing that, playing the two whistles. Is that right? Amazing. Uh, I, it's a little <laughs> it's actually it's people, you know, uh, a lot of people that would be looking in might be able to see as clearly, but it's there's a little trick to it, you know. Lawrence, you you've been an absolute legend. I've I've been beaming from ear to ear. People are gonna think there's something wrong with me um since you've started playing and what a pleasure and what an honor it has been to 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 be in your presence tonight with your wonderful instruments and to to allow us to hear the wonderful tunes that come out of them and i'm hoping that we didn't annoy you too much that you wouldn't come back again in the future oh, and play for us again yes, we could put you know we'll be, we'll be in course contact barry and miller we can put something like together again maybe have maybe have a few other people in for the lockdown and uh, there you go we have enough room to squeeze in maybe one or two one more person Brilliant. guitar player or something we could have a bit of a laugh you know too again for another night well, we'll figure this out. Uh, we'll we'll have you back. I'll give you a call tomorrow, and we'll have an old chat. Uh, but listen, Lawrence, thanks a million for your time, your talents. Uh, we're privileged, we're honoured, and uh, we're better off this week for you having played. Well, well, God bless you all. Thanks very much for having me on, and you know it was uh, it was nice to be uh, uh, to be able to do it. And thanks to Paddy, of course. Paddy was the guy who uh, he introduced was, us. Paddy, we were out on the Chicago River last night, and uh, he was when I was calling you. I was just getting that's ready. right. And um, so uh, we, uh, you know, I didn't know how this was going to go, but I now that I know how to do it, I don't, you know, sometimes you get nervous from some of these things, but I guess I'm the only person here in the room, but I know it's just you and me. <laughs> lots of people looking in. So uh, thanks so much for having me and uh, good luck with the rest. Thank you. Go go to lawrencenugent.com. Uh, Stacy's already bought an album on Amazon. She can't wait to get it. Um, Dana said this has been so moving. She didn't realize how much she's missed live music. Uh, we have uh, more. You have more fans after this performance. Thanks, Lawrence. Uh, they keep coming in. I'll send you. I'll email you a link to all these comments, Lawrence, so you can look at them tomorrow and get a good look into the all the feedback that we yeah, got here tonight. On the website too, you know, it's very easy to download the the music. You know, it's all available for download. I mean. Uh, the latest, some of the albums are um, the ones like, for instance, if you bought some of them, just not to put that woman off on Amazon.com, you know, the first three albums were, uh, you know, made for a company back in a while ago, and they would be very expensive on there on Amazon. Some of them would be hard to get now, but they're all available for download on my uh, CD on the, on the web. LawrenceNugent.com. For those of you interested, please go and, and support Lawrence, and we're going to have him back again and next time he's going to play four tin whistles instead of two at the same time <laughs> well hey thanks so much and thanks thanks to patty and everybody and yourself barry for having me good luck thanks with a million lawrence good luck good luck with the rest of the show man thank you so much i'll give you a shout tomorrow all the best Here, come. see ya what an absolute legend <laughs> a gentleman an absolute gentleman Woo, i'm lost for words i don't know what to do now what happens now on the live stream can somebody tell me um that was insane insane uh just amazing aren't we lucky that we that talent like that exists and somehow we're able to to get them on here and play a few tunes for us as we sip in our whiskeys um i almost forgot about the whiskeys i was so engrossed in the music but then you realize that whiskey and music are so interconnected and they're all about bringing people together and we wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't for whiskey 
but I'm liking this layering in of music on top of the whiskey. And if we can find a way to make this happen more often, uh, we're going to do this and uh, leave that with me. But I'd love to find a way to showcase the lock-in as a way to bring more uh, Irish talent to the fore while we sip on our whiskeys, which wouldn't be a bad thing. And if people can get exposure and we can support Irish artists uh, while we support Irish distillers and blenders, uh, then we'll have a... Um, and whiskey makers, we'll have a great old time indeed. And Kieran texted me, Kieran Follier from Two Gingers, as Paddy or as Lawrence was playing, he said, forget about Two Gingers. He said, it's all about the two tin whistles. And he's right. He's absolutely right. So go and follow Lawrence. Let me put, put up his website one more time as I look through your comments, lawrencenugent.com for more information. Uh, Kieran asks, how high does your bar go after that? I'm, I'm, I'm running out of ideas of where the bar goes from here. <laughs> But we're gonna, I'm going to get back together with Paddy and Lawrence. And there's a great Irish community of musicians in Chicago. And they have a thing called the Sunday, I think it's the Sunday Night Session on Facebook. It's a Facebook group. And I'm going to post it in our Facebook group, actually, in Irish Whiskey Fans of America. I'll put the details in there. But Paddy brings in musicians in a pub. I think it's the Galway Arms in Chicago. And they play every week on a Sunday. And it's a, it's a good old time. There's no whiskey, mind you, but uh, that can be your Friday night stop here and then go there on a Sunday night. But in any case, there's a big bank of musicians there that uh, I'd love to find a way to work out how we can support them and, uh, and uh, help them in these times when I'm sure their live performances are at a standstill. So um, us being able to bring in more whiskey brands to help support our live stream and the more you can share this live stream, the more people watch this on a weekly basis, the easier it is for me to ask brands to help support these musicians and ask whiskey brands to come on board and uh, support our, our, our efforts here because really it's a win-win-win for everybody. If, uh, if we can support musicians and then we can support Irish whiskey brands and everybody's getting something out of it and we get a Friday night where we have a good old time hanging out with familiar faces and friends, then I think that's a, that's a good thing. We're very lucky indeed, as Ed Power says in the comments. Very lucky. All right. I've got to pour some more whiskey, I think. Stacy's reminding me what happens next. You pour more whiskey and you talk about the awesome tunes. Okay. Greg asks, who's got to follow Lawrence? Yeah, that's my unfortunate privilege, is I've now got to fill the space that is tin whistle free and flute free. <laughs> so what can we do? I mean... This is almost the time where you'd have to bring in like a red breast dream cask because only a red breast dream cask would be sufficient of filling the air after such music as that. But I'm not going to be bringing in the dream cask. Instead, we're going to be going the other direction price-wise to Paddy Irish Whiskey. Uh, for those of you who have Paddy Irish Whiskey, would you pour yourselves a drop of Paddy? And we'll talk a little bit about Paddy as I catch myself up on your comments, which I cannot keep up with. They're coming in so fast. Dearman says, it's been a magnificent evening. Might be the best yet. I'm about to ruin all that now. Because it's all downhill from here. Good, healthy pour. Greg Anderson says, two gingers and two tin whistles equals forever. I like your style, Greg. I think you're onto something there. <laughs> um, but yeah, wouldn't this be great if this became a musician, Irish music and whiskey show? Uh, this can happen. This can happen. Do you know how it's going to happen? If you keep sharing this, if you keep commenting, if you keep liking, if you keep telling people, you know why? Because whiskey brands want to be part of that and I'll get them to pay for the musicians. How about that? That's the way we'll do it. So that musicians are supported. Okay, Whew. where do we go? Honestly, I need a break. I need a breather after all that. I'm moved. Andrew wants to know if I can play the spoons. <laughs> I can, but not very well. <laughs> oh, jeepers. That was just unreal, wasn't it, Kieran? Yeah, Kieran's probably still out there, supposedly, supposedly coaching baseball or ba baseball, and he's uh, he, he's tapping his feet to the tunes, kicking up the dust on the diamond there with his with, with the tunes that have been coming out of uh, the, the lock in tonight. All right, Paddy, Paddy, Paddy. Yes, we are on to Paddy. Right. So I mentioned tonight is, uh, and I've got lots to cover yet. Uh, we're only an hour and a half into our nine hours of usual programming, as you're all well aware. I said to Mrs. Stories and Sips tonight, no, tonight's going to be the night. We just do an hour tonight, just tonight, an hour. And she nodded and she said, yeah, sure. Sure it is. Tonight's the night, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's never night. It's never the night. Ed Powers says, second wind, you're only halfway through. <laughs> okay, so three whiskeys tonight. 
all under $20, affordable. You don't have to spend $600 on a bottle of whiskey from Ireland to enjoy Irish whiskey. This is not an elitist community, as those of you who are part of our Irish Whiskey Fans of America, I hope, uh, would agree with. There's no elitism in Irish whiskey. Nobody mocks somebody else for having a cheaper whiskey, and nobody uh, is... Uh, well, maybe some people are we're all jealous if somebody has a better whiskey than us, aren't we? But there's nobody uh, being rude or annoyed really about it. I always maintain Irish whiskey is for everybody, but not all Irish whiskey is for everybody. There's something there for everybody. The three whiskeys I'm tasting tonight are under $20, which makes them the most accessible, the most affordable Irish whiskeys you're going to find. Irish whiskey, for the most part, is ridiculously expensive. And I say that as one of the biggest Irish whiskey fans you're ever going to encounter. And I'll pay the money for it, but I think it's ridiculously expensive. That's not the fault of the distillers. It's not the fault fault of the of the uh, blenders or the merchants or the bonders. It's the fault of the Irish government. Uh, we're not going to get into political um, zinging tonight. But suffice to say that customs, our excise duty, and, and and taxes on on whiskey make it very very expensive. Bourbons can be found for much cheaper. When I was away last week, we were away. We met some friends who, or we were traveling with some friends who brought a bourbon, bottle of bourbon that was a $12 bottle, which was absolutely incredible. And uh, for $12, there's no Irish whiskey can compete at that price. In any case, we have won two gingers was $13.99 today. I've never had such value. I emptied my big ginger. Thanks, Kieran. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for texting me. And thanks for giving props to Larry. Red Bush, 1999. Paddy, Irish whiskey, 1999. Now I have a liter bottle here. This wasn't 1999, but it's 750 milliliter cousin, sister, brother, was $19.99. Now this is the old label. Look at this. This is Paddy Irish whiskey. In America now on the shelves, you'll see Paddy's, a rebrand with an apostrophe S. This is my favorite affordable Irish whiskey in the world. 40% alcohol by volume, a blended whiskey, a cork whiskey traditionally. This whiskey has been around since the 1700s, the late 1700s. This whiskey started out as the Cork Distilleries Company Map of Ireland Old Irish Whiskey. The Cork Distilleries Company was an amalgamation of a number of distilleries in Cork, the 1700s and 1800s. The Cork Distilleries Company then was one of the three whiskey companies that amalgamated to form Irish distillers, Powers, Jameson, and the Cork Distilleries Company. And Cork Distilleries Company, most famous distillery was Middleton. They were, um, the Cork Distilleries Company owned the Middleton Distillery. Paddy Irish Whiskey got its name in 1913 when their traveling salesman, Patrick J. O'Flaherty, or Paddy Flaherty, as his name was known in short, Paddy Flaherty was known the length and breadth of Ireland for being a great whiskey salesman. And Paddy would travel on the train around Cork and he'd be greeted at the station and practically carried into the pubs in the town. Why? Because everybody knew that Paddy was gonna buy everybody a round of whiskey and a round of drinks. And he'd buy them the Cork Distilleries Company, Map of Ireland, Old Irish Whiskey. And it was so popular and Paddy was so popular and so good at his job and he did such a great job of extolling the benefits of Paddy, of the old whiskey as it was named then, that the, the pub owners at the time would write to the distillery and they'd ask for a case of Paddy's whiskey because that's what it became known as because Paddy was the man who was shilling it and hawking it around the highways and byways of Ireland. So when Paddy retired uh, from his work in 1913, the Cork Distilleries Company asked if they could license his name, if they could pay him for the rest of his life and in return, could they use his name? And he agreed. And so they renamed the Cork Distilleries Company Map of Ireland Old Irish Whiskey, which was a mouthful. They renamed it to Paddy Irish Whiskey. And for the longest time, this was the label. This is what I grew up with, this old uh, typeface of the word Paddy. Uh, so synonymous, you'll see this on stained glass windows in pubs and mirrors in pubs in Ireland. And it has that four uh, province map of Ireland, Ulster, Leinster, Munster, and Connacht. And you'll see there, established 1779. That was uh, the year of the establishment of, I believe, the Cork Distilleries Company. And if you look, if it's not on this one, no, it's on the, there was a 100-year anniversary 2013 version that had the distiller as James Murphy. And the Murphy family were the ones who owned Cork Distilleries Company. But you see there Paddy Flaherty's signature on the bottom there. 
Uh, this is a triple blend, which means it is the three styles of Irish whiskey all blended together. Single malt, single pot still, and grain. Grain being a corn whiskey uh, from the column stills. Single malt, single uh, pot still, and single grain. Three different styles blended together to create a wonderful light whiskey. Now, growing up in Ireland in the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s, I've told this story many, many times. You were one of three or four houses in Ireland. In other words, you were either a Jameson house, a Paddy house, a Powers house, or a Bushmills house. That was it. Those four whiskies were the staple. And everybody had a bottle of one of them in case the priest called, or in case a relative called, or in case somebody got a cut knee, or somebody was thirsty. There'd be a bottle of whiskey in the cabinet. We were a Powers house. I remember Powers Gold Label growing up. I still remember that very coppery gold label bottle, the screw cap of the old Powers bottle. But Paddy was also in the cabinet on occasion. And I think I had an uncle who liked Paddy. Uh, so we, we had that on occasion if we knew he was coming. Um, Paddy has been distilled in the Middleton Distillery for, we're going back now, 100 plus years. It is now owned by Sazerac. So it's actually owned by an American brand, sadly. I've got to be honest with you, and I'm sorry all my American friends, but there's a little bit of me dies when I know that such a storied Irish brand as Paddy leaves Irish hands. And that's not the nationalist in me. It's rather the romantic and the, uh, yeah, just a little bit of romance and, and a little bit of just sadness for there was a wonderful ro romantic view we have on the past i'm sure in in those days it wasn't half as romantic as we think it was and it was a lot harder than we think but in any case uh, to know that it's no longer part of irish distillers and that the middleton distillery today no longer produces any brands that were originally produced there instead they are producing powers and jameson and the brands that came from dublin and um you know they don't own, any longer own the brands like they, they while they produce paddy and will do for a few more years they don't own that brand and that to me is a little bit of a sad thing um but in any case it's a great whiskey so i have some here in my glass my story is in sip to a glass so slaunch to all of you for sticking in sticking around i'm gonna have a little sip of this mm. I smile every time I sip Paddy. It's a uh, Paddy tastes like sitting in a pub in Cork. There's a fire somewhere in the in the in the in the pub. You're not too near it. There's a warmth there though, but you're not sitting on top of it. And you have easy access to the bar, and your friends are with you, and maybe a family member you haven't seen in a while. That's the taste of Paddy. Nostalgia, maybe. Maybe it's a glass of nostalgia, not romance. Nostalgia. Um, there's wonderful memories and I suppose markers of Paddy around Cork City like I mentioned you'll go into old pubs in Ireland and Cork especially and you'll see Paddy mirrors on the wall and there are stained glass if you walk up towards the Shandon Bells in Cork City you'll pass a pub as you're wandering spiraling up towards the Shandon Bells and if you it's opposite the Maldron Hotel this pub and I can't remember the name of the pub but I've stopped there many times because it took me by surprise to see the Paddy logo in beautiful stained glass opposite the Maldron Hotel on the way up to the Shandon Bells. And it's just, it's it's old Ireland, it's old whiskey, it's old Irish whiskey history. The Cork Distilleries Company played such a pivotal role in the survival of Irish whiskey. They themselves amalgamated a number of distilleries together in, our, in Cork to create the Cork Distilleries Company. And if it wasn't for the Cork Distilleries Company, we wouldn't have the Middleton Distillery, we wouldn't have Green Spot and Red Spot and Red Breast and all of our wonderful Middleton whiskies that we know today without what happened back in the 1700s, the 1800s, and ultimately in 1965 and 1966 when Irish Distillers was formed. So it's light, it's fruity, there's not much of a finish to it, it's not harsh, it's very pleasant, it's an easy drinker. I've never mixed it with anything, but it would go just as well with ginger ale, I'm sure, as two gingers would. But it's a lovely little sipping whiskey, affordable, Paddy and Powers would have been the best-selling whiskies in Ireland in the 80s and 90s. It would just be a staple of every pub and many, many homes. Um, so, again, slodger. Mm. Lorcan uh, says that Paddy is a brand was on death's door and Sazerac may have revitalized it. So here's the reality. 
it's only in the last 10 years that there's been this resurgence and in interest in Irish whiskey. And up until that, that point, you didn't have, you, there was no such thing as a single cask whiskey, or there was no such thing as these specialty finished whiskies in wine barrels that we now are so lucky to see and are so used to. So you had all of these brands, especially under the Middleton umbrella, under the Irish distillers umbrella, one distillery producing what you could argue are competing brands. Powers, Jameson, Paddy, they're all blends that are not a million miles away from each other. And you would argue are all competing for the same share of wallet. So there came a time when the Irish distillers realized it was time to perhaps offload Paddy and focus on Powers and Jameson as their blends instead. So yeah, uh, hopefully Sazerac put some money into it. I'd love to see a new Paddy expression coming out. Nothing has happened to the brand since they bought it. And nothing at all, except for the re-labeling of Paddy to Paddy's, which I can take or leave it. I'm not a big fan of Americanizing it. And it's got an awful picture or a caricature of Paddy on the label with a, I think it's a shamrock in his pocket and a bowler hat, uh, kind of the, the Hollywood Ireland, I suppose, or the, the shamrocks and shillelaghs Ireland. But look, maybe there's an audience for that. But in any case, we're lucky that we have Paddy still today and that we can drink it. Um, I see some of you are getting it for $29, $27. Maureen paid over $40 in Canada. That's amazing. Um, yeah, James says it's his go-to Irish whiskey. And absolutely, it's so affordable. It's so approachable. It's so easy to drink. A little bit of pear on the nose, apples, a little bit of vanilla. But one of the few triple blended whiskies, um, Tullamore Dew being another one. Steve says it's right. At least Paddy is still going as a brand. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so what else have we got to talk about? So yes, this week, exciting times for our whiskey, the story. The story, you may be familiar with this. This is a whiskey that we introduced a few weeks back. It's a collaboration between Stories and Sips and JJ Corey, our friends at JJ Corey, the Whiskey Bonders in County Clare. Louise McGuan is our friend who's been putting together um, samples of this potential whiskey for us so that we can evaluate and determine which of these whiskeys is going to make it. So this week I got a package in the post of four bottles like this. So each one is labeled blend number one. And as you can see, I've taken a serious chunk out of this. Blend number two, and then number three and four. And Louise sent these over to me in a package. And you know what it said inside the package? All it said was, all the information I got with these four whiskeys was, enjoy them. That's it. I don't know what they are. I have no idea. There's no indication as to whether what is the blend, what's this, what is the, yeah, what are we looking at here? I don't know. I don't know if it's 20% malt, 80% grain. I don't know any details of the age. So I've literally been shipped a blind package and I couldn't be more thankful. You know why? Because if I know that something is older or something contains more of a, let's say a premium element like malt as opposed to grain, Maybe my bias will lead me towards that. But instead, I've got four whiskeys of unknown origin, four whiskeys of unknown contents that I am sitting through taking notes on. And I've had three tastings so far. And I think I probably have another five to go because every time I come back to each of these bottles, I get something different. Now, there's one is standing out to me and it's number one, blend number one. And there's, that's why there's more gone in this than any others. But I need to do another tasting to find out. So what's going to happen is, as I go through these tastings, I go through these, these samples, I'm taking my notes, and then I'm going to get back together with Louise, and we're going to talk about what I have experienced, and what I like, and what I don't like, and then she'll probably do the grand reveal, and say, well, here's what you were tasting. So what we're, the, the danger here would be to say to Louise, give us the oldest, most premium spirits that you have, put that in a bottle, and we'll call it the story. But of course, that would then ignore the wonderful blends that occur when less premium, younger spirits come together. So I'm tasting these not knowing their age. I have some suspicions, but I could be completely wrong. I have an amateur palate. I'm no expert. But I'll keep tasting these, and then I'll give the feedback to Louise. And then if I say, look, it's blend number one, what's going to happen is 
Blend number one is going to be uh, is going to be created. So they're going to disgorge barrels and they're going to uh, craft blend number one, uh, and then they're going to um, get it to forty six percent ABV, which is much higher than the standard forty percent, and we couldn't go for a super cask strength version because I'm trying to keep the price under $100, which we will keep to for a bottle. And the miniature bottles will be, of course, much, much cheaper. Uh, but I'm not going more expensive than that. It's just not it's not realistic for most people. So sub $100, I'm leaning towards number one, but ask me again in two or three days. I don't have much time with this. By the middle of this week, I think I've got to decide. Um, so that's, uh, that's these four. So uh, I announced on last week's, not last week's live stream, the week before I shared with you, did I share it on the, no, actually I shared it in our Facebook group. I shared the labels with you, the labels that have been submitted to the American government who have to approve them. And then once they're approved, we then get to print the labels, put them on the bottles and uh, ship them. So what's going to happen is the bottles, the shape is not going to be too dissimilar to this Middleton bottle. It's a fairly similar shape to this. But rather than putting a label straight across the front, our label is going to go diagonally up across it. So it's going to be like a snake up around the uh, the bottle. It's going to be pretty unique, and I think it's going to stand out. I was going to say stand out on the shelf, but it's never going to see the shelf because we're going to get it to all of you so quickly uh, that hopefully it doesn't sit on a shelf very long. I do understand from the comments that there is a road trip happening from Ohio to California to pick up the story. Uh, Ohio is sadly one of the states that is not permitting us to ship our whiskey in there. We can ship it to 47 states. We can ship to Ohio. I don't think we can ship to Rhode Island and maybe Arkansas as well. And I think everywhere else we can ship to. But Ohio, sadly, for all of you Ohio friends of mine, it's a problem. We can't get it in there. You can uh, write your strongly worded letters to the uh, the Liquor Control Ohio Liquor Board and uh, let's see if they if they give you any feedback on that. But I, if, you, if you're making a road trip, we'll make a party out here. We'll have a, we'll throw a party for anybody who wants to come to California to pick it up. We'll, uh, maybe we'll do a live lock-in from, uh, from the liquor store or from somewhere in California where this can happen. So that's gonna be around December time, but it all depends on shipping. So these bottles, once they're bottled, will be loaded into a container and they'll then spend six weeks at sea as they get from, uh, where do they go? They Get in, I think they get in a ship in Amsterdam and then eventually they get to New York and then we've got to get them across the country from New York to California. Sometimes the shipments come in at Long Island or, we, or Long Beach uh, and then we can get them from Long Beach to our retailer, but not this time. It's getting to New York. Um, so that is the story with the story. Uh, Ed asks if the samples are cask strength. Couldn't tell you. Look, that's as much information as I have. Blend one. I don't... I don't get the sense these are cask strength. I don't. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's been a fun. As soon as I came back from my vacation, I, I ripped open this box and I started sniffing these immediately. And that same night, I started pouring myself a drop. We have many uh, offers of bootlegging across the country. And I'll urge you all to keep your bootlegging suggestions private, uh, lest there be roadblocks. I have visions of the cannonball the cannonball run across the country with uh, police roadblocks and customs agents at every state line picking up uh, bottles of the story. If that happens, just make sure you film it because it'll make for a great episode that we'll put together a great documentary on the story. <laughs> Gary works in Long Beach, so he's going to pick them up if they come to port there. Look at this. <laughs> okay, so um, Steve asks me to tell us uh, tell you about blend number one. All right, so let me pour this into a clean glass and start again with blend number one. I'll just do this really quick because I don't want to do this live because it'd be boring as hell for all of you to watch me know something for three minutes. I'm now, my, my nosing is compromised by a beautiful smell of food cooking in the apartment. My nosing is compromised by a, whatever lovely thing you're cooking. What's that over there? Oh, that's lovely. Okay. So blend number one to me is a very high malt component. It's not to me dissimilar to 
a aged a bush mill single malt a 16 year old single malt or even a 20 dare i say it, a 21 year old malt there's a wonderful fruity tang to this that like a biscuity fruitiness that to me is synonymous with an older single malt Yeah, it's just a wonderful tropical fruits on the nose. And there's just a candied, there's a candied texture, a candied note on the palate. Again, I'm four or five whiskeys in, cocktails in, I need separate time to sit down with this, but there's something about blend number one that's standing out to me. There's an oakiness to it. There's a a, a nose that it has been in a barrel for a long time. There's a nose of a wet, damp, Irish rain-infused cellar or warehouse on blend number one that I don't get on two, three, and four. To me, two, three, and four are a little bit hotter. There's a little bit more spice or ABV. I'm leaning more towards the ABV on it. And I think blend number one could be a little bit less than that. Or it's just a more mature whiskey that has mellowed that, um, that ABV over time. So... That is what I think about blend number one. And speaking of older whiskeys, Eric, wait, I appear on Eric's show, his YouTube show. Uh, for those of you who haven't checked that out, go check out Eric Wait Whiskey Studies on YouTube, sipping on a wee drama, Bushmills 21. Great to see you, Eric. And Larry, who I was supposed to call today, but didn't because the day got away from me. Larry, good to see you. Larry is our contact and our facilitator for getting the story into California. Larry is our great friend, and if it wasn't for Larry, this wouldn't happen. So, Larry, for not the first time, I apologize for not calling you in time today, but I will make that up to you and give you a call tomorrow. Dana wants to know what's Mrs. Stories and Sips cooking. It is a shredded chicken. What is it, love? Shredded chicken taco. Shredded chicken taco. Taco chicken. It smells amazing. <laughs> Eric says that right now, all whiskey in Northern California smells like Connemara. Yes, Northern California, of course, under severe um, weather alerts and wildfire smoke and air quality alerts. Sa San Diego is faring a little bit better, though you can see the sun, just a globe, a glowing orb in the sky, um, but it's not as orange as uh, Northern California. So stay safe up there, Eric. All right. Uh, so we are drinking Paddy. I hope you're enjoying your drinks. Let me know what's in your glass at this stage of the night. Uh, what a great night we had with Larry uh, Lawrence at the start of the night with his numerous tin whistles and his flutes. We're going to bring Larry back and uh, have him play again for us. We'll figure out a way to make this a music and whiskey session. I think that's a good thing for the night that's in it. Larkin's drinking a few pints. Uh, Redlands is pretty smoky right now too. <laughs> Rick says he'd like to buy Larry a drink or a car. <laughs> um, okay, so I also have to let you know what's happening next week. So it is a uniquely American holiday because in Ireland we don't celebrate this, but next week is halfway to St. Patrick's Day. We started our lock-in on St. Patrick's Day this year in 2020. We're now six months in. We've only missed one lock-in. You allowed me to go away for a week. Thank you for the privilege. And... We are back tonight and we're not intending to, to miss any other weeks, but next week is an important milestone because it'll be a full six months since St. Patrick's Day, which means it's a full six months until St. Patrick's Day. And it's a uniquely American holiday because we don't do that in Ireland, but over here, you like to, especially Irish pubs, like to start a countdown clock of the 183 odd days that it takes to get to St. Patrick's Day. So to commemorate, to honor, to celebrate halfway to St. Patrick's Day, Next week, we are going to attempt our most ambitious lock-in of all time. Now, I know you said earlier, nothing can top tonight. Maybe not. But we're going to try because next week we are doing a pub crawl. In fact, we are doing a Clonakilty crawl because next week, our friends at Clonakilty Distillery are going to set up the ultimate East Coast pub crawl. We are going to work our way up a number of pubs on the East Coast where we're going to go to them live for music, for Irish coffee making, for stories, for chat, all while we sip on whiskeys, many of the, some amazing Clannacilty whiskeys. 
We're going to have the master distiller from Clonakilty Distillery come on and talk us through uh, their process and their approach and what they're working on. And we are going to have the most ambitious lock-in, which will go one of two ways. It'll either be an absolute farce of biblical proportions as we try and get everybody to turn up to their spots on time, or it's going to be the most fun night of all time. In fact, it is going to be the most fun night of all time because there's going to be so much toing and froing and back and forth with, uh, there's going to be so many people involved in this to get this right. Normally, I think the most we've ever had on the lock-in is two guests. That was Kilbegan. Well, next week, six, seven, maybe more guests, different times, different cities, different times, time zones to me, music that has to happen, an outdoor, a mobile pub is going to be involved, a musician is going to be involved, all the gates of hell are going to open in the best way because we're going to try something incredible. Um, I, we've not tried this before, so I'm going to be spending the next week figuring this out uh, with our friends at Clonakilty Distillery. So thank you to Clonakilty for coming on board for our second session, which is a Clonakilty takeover. So I'll be sipping on different Clonakilty whiskeys that are on their way to me, including some very rare single casks that they acquired from other distilleries that may be released under their, um, their brand. But also, they're going to introduce some new collaborations with some new breweries, uh, new brewery collaborations. And we're going to go to some of those breweries live as part of this live stream. As I talk about it out loud, I'm even laughing at the scale of this uh, attempt at this live stream. Uh, but that's Friday. Next Friday, it's going to be nuts. It's going to be wild. If we pull it off, there'll be a ticker tape parade as we're carried through the streets celebrating uh, such a monumental uh, whiskey broadcast as this. So I'd love your support. I'd love you all to uh, to get involved. Uh, Rick says, Barry's like Mr. It's like Pitbull, Mr. Worldwide. Yeah, I, I've a little bit too much hair, but it's uh, it's disappearing now. I'll be noticing in the in the mirror now. I think I'm going bald too, like like Pitbull himself. But we're gonna have a great time. Um, Clonakilty, I'm a big fan of what they're doing. It's a Cork distillery. It's a West Cork distillery. I'm from Cork. It's hard not to be proud of what they're doing down there. I've had a great time when I visited the distillery. Uh, they've been kind enough to take me out to the barley fields to see what they're doing, to show me around and to spend time with me and to help me understand why they, what they're doing is special. And I think what they're doing is special. They, their new make spirit, that is the spirit that comes out of their still, that is clear, that isn't yet whiskey, has won awards uh, for uh, at the World was the World Spirits Awards. They have won awards for their new make spirit, which is a great indication of the whiskey that's to come. So uh, really exciting, uh, really excited to do that. So we're working through the calendar on that. I would say by Tuesday, we'll have something live in our group. I'd love you to share this with your friends. This is going to be epic. Halfway to St. Patrick's Day. This may be such an epic live stream that it may go all the way to St. Patrick's Day. Let's be honest. It's that uh, ambitious an undertaking. So they have, um, yeah, they have lots of interesting, interesting things going on, and we'll we'll talk to many people from Clonakilty next week. Uh, yes, Ed, you're right. The mobile pub is with Damien Cashman. Yep, we're going to go to the the Rambling Inn. He's going to be part of our live stream. And Jeff says their new make is world class, and I think I have a bottle of their new make, but it's in Ohio, sadly. Johnny says wonderful whiskeys. They are. They're really. I'm really impressed by those that they have uh, released so far and those that the new make that they're making is indicative of something really great to come. So uh, looking forward to talking to their distiller and uh, a few more, more details to come. We've got to rope in a musician or two as well uh, to make it a real session. So that's it, folks. Uh, this is not a three-hour session. I think uh, it's very hard to follow up uh, with Lawrence after he nailed it. I mean, absolutely nailed it with a, a fantastic few tunes for us to kick us off. Great to showcase Irish talent. We'll do more of that. I'm still sipping on my paddy. I'll be sipping on this for a while longer, I'd say. But the food is beckoning over my shoulder. And why don't we give a round of applause to Mrs. Stories and Sips, who on a Friday night, this is not, we're, I'm not trying to portray this as the archetypal Irish house of a woman doing all the dishes and the cooking. But I will say that on a Friday night, Mrs. Stories and Sips, and many other nights, recognizes that something important is going down with the whiskey. And she decides she's going to take over and do the 
make a nice meal so that when I'm finished, there's a lovely meal and we get to sit down and have a nice bite together. So thank you to Mrs. Stories and Sips for that. Um, we couldn't do this without you. Uh, Caroline asks, next Friday, next week is Friday or Saturday? Always Friday. Always Friday, um, Caroline. Um, we won't be doing it on Saturday. It is on Friday. Let me see. Friday the 18th, even though technically Thursday the 17th is a is halfway. Um, for those of you that are in Ohio and who may have participated in my uh, tasting event with Fado, the Irish pubs in Fado, a month ago, we're doing another one this week. I'm going to put the details in the group tomorrow, but this is a more elaborate dinner where you're going to be given all the ingredients, including, I believe, a filet of beef uh, and Middleton 2019, Middleton very rare. We're going to do a tasting dinner, but you're going to be cooking along with the chef. I'm going to be talking through Middleton very rare and a couple of other whiskeys. That's happening this Thursday, the 17th. Uh, I'll put the details in the group. It's uh, in conjunction with the Fado pub group. In Easton, in o Easton, Columbus, and Dublin, Ohio. Those are the two that are participating. So if you're in Ohio and want to participate in that, I'll put the details in the group. And uh, let me see, what else have we got? Tony asks if next week she will conduct the live stream so that I cook. She would hate to be on the live stream as much as she might hate to eat the food I cook. <laughs> all right stacy says she'd be willing to cook for middleton very rare all right i'll be putting up the details on our facebook group tomorrow uh, and if you want to participate in that please do ed says it's a very meaty menu i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing depends if you like meat or not that's on thursday night on the 17th of september so next week halfway to st patrick's day clonakilty a week later Tal Nua Distillery, Colorado, coming on to challenge Irish single pot stills with the American single pot still whiskies. So stay tuned for that. And that, everybody, is it. Oh, Jeff has a question. Jeff Adams, a non-Ohio person, has a question about the upcoming Powers tasting participants. Jeff, everybody can participate in that uh, tasting uh, if you're in the state of Ohio. You may have to drive across the border to do so. Uh, it is the Ohio. So because I lived in Ohio for so many years, of course, I have relationships with the teams in Ohio. Uh, we did a lot of live tastings where many of you have met me for the first time and how I've gotten to know you all. Uh, that's the reason why we're a little bit Ohio heavy on some of our tastings. I don't have the bandwidth to make state-by-state -state relationships, sadly, uh, to be able to do state-by-state -state events. But our Powers event that's taking place for Ohio on September 24th all going well, we're gonna try and replicate that on the live stream, uh, where we're gonna have Derek King, the, the global brand ambassador for Powers, coming on uh, to walk us through the history, make some cocktails with us. He's great crack, I've, I've enjoyed some nights out in Cork with him, and he's a great fun. If, if Ohio goes to plan, we're gonna do it on the live stream as well. Hopefully they'll come and support us. And all participants have been selected for Ohio. We have managed to secure 60 gift boxes for our Ohio applicants, believe it or not. So it was originally 50, but so many people applied. We found 60 sets of glassware and lapel pins and cocktail cards and all kinds of fun things. So 60 boxes are gonna be mailing their way out. I'm gonna email everyone from Ohio who is fortunate enough to get one of those early next week. And then within a few days, a package should turn up on your door. All right, so last thing we have to do just like when the pubs close in Ireland, there's an old song. Normally it's the national anthem. I'm not going to sing the national anthem, but it's almost time. Maybe it is time for a bit of the old triangle. What do you think? Should we sing out with the old triangle? We'll have to. There's no other songs being offered up. All right. So thank you all, as always, for joining in with the lock-in for supporting, for sharing, for commenting. Uh, without your support, well, I wouldn't bother turning up because it's no fun drinking alone. So thanks for coming. Keep coming back. Keep telling your friends. Keep telling people who don't like Irish whiskey that if they come to the lock-in, they might be converted, but at the very least, they'll have a good old time. So our anthem tonight, as Andrew says, is the old triangle. So we'll sing a few bars of that.
Let me get my old paddy in my hand. A quick sip. A hungry feeling came o'er me stealing, and the mice were squealing in my prison cell, and the old triangle went jingle jangle all along the banks of the Royal Canal to begin the morning. The screw was ballin. Get up, your bowsy, and clean out your cell. And the old triangle went jingle jangle all along the banks of the Royal Canal. Up in the female prison, there are seventy-five women. Tis among those women I wish I did dwell, and the old triangle went jingle jangle all along the banks of the Royal Canal, and the old triangle went jingle jangle all along the banks of the Royal Canal, all along the banks of the Royal Canal. You! It's launch, everybody. Great night again. Great lock in. We'll see you all in the Facebook group. Listen to the podcast. Give us your support. Tell a friend about us. And we'll see you back here for our halfway to St. Patrick's Day celebration with Connacilty Distillery next week. Slauncha and Ihawa.